Hey, and happy Tuesday. Today is December the 2nd, and you're getting so close to the end of 2020. It's crazy. I can't believe it. But if you are looking at my screen right now and not necessarily my face, you may notice that we have another problem string to do today. And so you may want to go ahead and get out your number corner workbooks and open up so that you can work through this problem string with me because we're working together, but you guys are responsible for your learning. And we're going to talk about some strategies for addition and subtraction today. So get ready. While you're getting your notebooks out, let me go ahead and provide the context to our problem string for today. And this may ring, um, this may sound close to home to you because my students last year loved to race each other. Do you guys like racing each other during recess time? Yeah, well, my students took it a step further and every time they raced, they timed it. And the next time they raced, they would try to beat the time that they had gotten previously. So with that in mind, we're gonna start our problem string. And sometimes context really helps us to think about what's going on and helps us find a strategy that's really efficient so that we can solve it, solve it quickly, and accurately every time. So let's see what's happening with this very first problem. One student runs 100 meters in 86 seconds. The second time she tried, she ran it even faster, which is the goal when you're timing yourself, especially if you're training for a race of some kind. And her time was seven seconds less than her first time. How long did it take her to run the 100 meters the second time? You guys can do this. Solve it really quickly. All right, hopefully you have your answer because you should have been able to do this problem in your head. So if I were to do it in my head, what answer would I get? What is 86 minus 7? Did you get 79? Awesome. Well, I need somebody to explain to me how you got 79. What did you do if you did it in your head to figure it out so quickly? Ah, so you broke 7 down into 6 and one more. Awesome. We know that 6 plus 1 is 7. And so sometimes when you're subtracting a smaller number, you can break it into even smaller chunks. And that will help you. Um, subtract and to subtract quickly. So this whole thing was seven. We have six and we have one. And you may not be able to see my one very clearly, but that's okay because we know exactly what's happening, right? All right, well, let's keep it moving. Let's see what happens next or what happens with another student. So even though this student beat her time, she was very determined to run even faster. I'm wondering, how many of you can run 100 meters faster than 79 seconds? Maybe you should try today at recess if you have a chance. Or if you're home learning, then go outside and time yourself because exercise is good no matter if you're learning from home or learning from school. Okay, so she practiced and she practiced and a week later, a week later, she had taken 17 seconds off of her original time of 86 seconds. How fast could she run the 100 meters after practicing? Go ahead and solve it. If you need to pause the video, by all means, please do so. Did anybody figure this out really quickly in your head? Uh, I sure hope so because what's the connect? Remember we said problem strings, there's usually a connection between the problems. The, the earlier problems usually are easier than the later problems, right? But we can use what we've done, much like ratio tables, to help us solve later problems. So what we did earlier is we subtracted 7. And how is 7 related to 17? 17 is 10 more. So since we already subtracted our seven and got 79, now all we need to do is subtract 10, right? And if you subtracted 10, what'd you get? 
Awesome. 69. And I'm circling my answer because today when we're talking about some different strategies to use with subtraction, it's going to matter whether your answer is where we're landing or if your answer is going to be in our hops up here. And you'll see what I mean in just a second if you're not quite sure. All right? Let's keep it moving. Let's see. My students often compare their running times with each other. You guys probably do the same thing to see who's faster. One day, two students ran 100 meters. One student finished in 80 seconds, 86 seconds, and the other finished 77 seconds. How much faster was the first student? So take some time and work this problem out. All right, can someone talk me through what you did to solve this problem? 86 minus 77. All right, did anybody do this? Ooh. Start at 86 and subtract a whole 77. Probably not, right? Because that would be kind of difficult to do all in one step and in our head without doing some other procedure to figure it out. So you may remember I said earlier, you can chunk numbers into smaller numbers to help figure it out. So maybe you take 86 and maybe you subtract, I don't know, 70. Because we know 8 tens minus 7 tens is going to give us 110. And that's 16, right? Okay, but we're not, we haven't subtracted 77. We need to subtract seven more, which we could think of seven more as six and one, kind of like we did up here, which is going to give us nine. And here's our answer. Now, I wonder if there is more, if there is a more efficient way to solve this problem. I can give you a hint, or maybe somebody did this, and if so, I'm so excited. This problem, the way it's written, it's talking about comparing two numbers. And so when you compare two numbers, you can think about it as finding the distance between those two numbers. So that means I have 86 and I have um, 77. And since I'm comparing them, I don't know how far apart they are. They are. And so I need to find the space in between, right? So we know three would give us 80, and then six more would give us our 86. So what's six plus three? Right, it's nine. And so in this case, our answer is not where we landed. Our answer is right in between because we're finding the distance between those two numbers. So if you did this, great job, give yourself a maybe a pat on the back. And if you did it the first way, that's okay because you still got the right answer. But I do want you to challenge yourself to see or ask yourself, which one is more efficient? Okay, so when you have smaller number, when you're subtracting a smaller number, it's very easy to take that amount away. But when your two numbers are fairly close together, you may wanna think about finding the difference between those two numbers. So let's look at the next problem, and then I want you guys to think about what might be the best strategy to use for this problem. Two other students also ran 100 meters. Their times were 87 seconds and 79 seconds. What is the difference between these times? So if you didn't work it out this way the first with the last problem, I challenge you to do it this way for this problem. Go ahead and pause this video as needed so that you have your time to work through it. All right, let's talk about it. And my, 
My 7 for 87 looks really funky. Let's see if I can fix it. All right, the difference. When I'm finding the difference between those two numbers, and notice, again, these two numbers are really close to each other. It would take a lot more work to go backwards, starting at 87 and subtracting 70 or subtracting 40 and then 30 or chunks at a time. It's really easy to count up between um, the two numbers. So if I were to do that, or if you did that, like I asked, what did you get? What is the difference here between 79 and 87? Right, it is eight. So where is our answer? Is our answer here, like some of the other problems, or is our answer in the middle? Yeah, it's in the middle. We're finding the difference between two numbers. And I also want to point out, um, in both cases, I kind of counted up 79 to 80 and then to 87. But you can count backwards, just like we did here. So you could start at 87 and then work your way down to 79, which would be the same thing, subtracting 7 and then subtracting 1. Either way you look at it, our answer is still a total of eight um, numbers different. There's a difference of eight numbers between 79 and 87 seconds. So in this, if talking about context of the problem, there's a difference of eight seconds. Okay? All right. All right, so now let's look at the next problem. One student ran 500 meters in 342 seconds. The second time he tried, he ran it even faster. His time was nine seconds less than his first time. How long did it take him to run the 500 meters the second time? I also want to point out that in some of these problems, we're given extra information that we don't necessarily need to solve the problem. We don't need 500 in our um, equation or in our calculation. That is simply a description of what's happening, which is another reason why when you're reading word problems, context is so important. You need to understand what's going on so that you can read a problem and then figure out what operation to use so that then you can determine what strategy you want to use for that operation. Okay, so since we know the context is you're running races, you're timing yourself, and you're trying to get faster, it's easy for us to see that we need to subtract. You start at 342 seconds, you're getting nine seconds faster, um, so we're subtracting nine seconds from our 342 seconds. Go ahead and do that really quickly. Three hundred forty two seconds minus nine seconds. What would you get? Did you get three hundred thirty? What? 333? How'd you get that? Are you sure? Did you chunk nine into smaller chunks? Yeah, especially when you have big numbers like that. Earlier we had some smaller numbers, now we have larger numbers. And so I want to get to a friendly number. So instead of just subtracting nine, I, even Miss Tremel, had to do this in her head when she was thinking through the answer. I first subtracted two, which gave me 340. So that's my landmark number. I like to hop to multiples of 10 because it's really easy for me to work with that. And now that I subtracted two, how many more do I need to go to make nine? Seven more. So now if I subtract seven, I'm gonna get 330. Three. Did you get that? Awesome. Let's look at the next one. Let's see what's going to happen. Third time the student runs 500 meters, he ran it even faster. This time it was 19 seconds less than the first time. How long did it take to run the 500 meters the third time? Challenge. Use what we just did to figure out the answer. Go for it. All right, what'd you get? 
Did you get 323? I sure hope so. One reason is because 19 is 10 plus 9. We already subtracted our 9 here. Now all we need to do is subtract another 10, which is going to give us 323 seconds. Another challenge. How many minutes is that? Or how many minutes and seconds? Hmm, I wonder. Let's keep it moving. Last two problems. One student runs 500 meters in 342 seconds. Another student runs the same race in 335 seconds. How much longer did it take the first student? Now, again, this is a reminder. This is a comparison problem. So when you have a number and you're taking away a small amount, it's easy to take some away because you can chunk it into smaller amounts. When you have numbers that are really close together, it makes more sense to find the difference. And we know that, or we're given a hint because it's saying how much longer, which is comparing. We are comparing two numbers here. And so if you didn't know, let me give you the really big hint that when you're comparing two numbers, you are going to start with the numbers that you're comparing. So I have 335 and I have 342. I'm trying to find the difference, the distance between those two numbers. Go ahead and figure it out. All right, how many seconds was the difference? How much longer does it take? Seven seconds, yeah. Five seconds would get us to 340, and then another two seconds is 342. And I could have gone forwards or backwards. I could have subtracted two and then subtracted five, or add five and then add two. Either one gives me the same answer, and guess what? My answer is here. Up here, there was my answer, okay? Last problem. One student ran 500 meters in 343 seconds, took another student 325 seconds to run the same race. How much longer? Sounds similar to this problem, right? A little bit of different numbers, so go ahead and work it out. Okay, what'd you do to solve it? Let's get to a friendly number, right? We can go to 330, which is adding 5. And then we can go to 340, which is adding 10. And then 343. Or I could have gone directly from 330 to 343 by adding 13. I could have even started at the bigger number and went down. Minus 3. Minus 10, minus 5, okay? So today we've done a couple things. I just want to sum it up for you. I know I've said it a few times, but I'm going to say it again. When you're subtracting, sometimes it makes sense to take away. Usually that's when you have a small number that you're taking away. You can chunk that small number into even smaller numbers to get to friendly numbers, especially when you're working on a number line because that will then help you um, do mental math in your head much quicker. Okay, other times it doesn't make sense to take numbers away. If the numbers are really close together, it makes more sense to find the difference between the two numbers. Okay, so if you're taking away, you know where you land is the answer. And if you're finding the difference between two numbers, then our answer is going to be our in the in between. What do we do to find how much? how many numbers or how much space, how many seconds was in between those two numbers. The last thing I will say is when you're finding the difference between the two numbers, so like these problems right here, you can start at the bottom from this lot smaller number and add up, or you can start at the bigger number and subtract backwards. Either way, it's going to get you the same answer. So today we talked about strategies for subtraction. I hope to see that you're going to apply this knowledge in number corner workouts, in um, bridges, um, checkpoints, and tests. 
and just in everyday life for mental math, especially if you're racing and you're telling each other. All right? Have a great afternoon. See you tomorrow.